In this video, I will explain in simple language a condition that many people haven't heard of. Tumors in an area of the brain called the cerebellopontine angle or CP angle. Don't worry about the name. We'll explain everything in easy language. Namaste. I'm Dr. Malati Panchavag, anesthesiologist for neurosurgeries and a perioperative physician. Also, we'll tell you why it's important to choose an experienced neurosurgeon when surgery is needed. These tumors are not always dangerous, but early understanding and proper treatment can make a huge difference. We shall start with some background and then go on to treatment. I will reveal an interesting and not commonly known fact in the end. So please watch till the end. Let's begin. So what exactly is the CP angle? The CP angle is a triangular area at the back of your head near your ear. It is a very sensitive area because many important nerves pass through it as you can see here. These nerves control your facial sensation, the swallowing, eye movements, hearing, balance and facial movements. Even a small tumor in this small space can cause significant symptoms if not treated in time. So what type of brain tumors develop in this area? Most CP angle tumors are benign, which means they are not cancerous and they grow slowly. The most common types of tumors that grow in the CP angle area are the vestibular schwannoma, which arises from nerve of hearing and balance or a meningioma which grows from the covering of the brain or an epidermoid cyst. It's a kind of developmental cyst that grows slowly over time. Among these vestibular schwannomas are the most common. We have treated many such cases in the last 25 to 30 years and modern neurosurgery at our center uses advanced tools like high-powered microscopes, neuronavigation systems, and intraoperative monitoring, allowing us to operate with extreme precision. These technologies help protect delicate nerves and brain structures, reducing complications and improving recovery. As a result, patients experience safer surgeries, better functional outcomes, and shorter hospital stays. Now we need to know who is at risk of developing these tumors. These tumors typically affect people in any age group but is more common between the ages of 20 and 70. In rare cases, they may run in families, especially in a condition called neurofibromatosis type 2, where tumors can appear on both sides of the brain or maybe multiple in number. So how does one know if they have this type of brain tumor? What are the symptoms? When a CP angle tumor starts to grow, it presses on the nearby nerves. Commonly affected are the seventh and eighth nerves, but the fifth may also be affected. Other important nerves in this area are the fourth, sixth, ninth and tenth nerves. We have published a video on the nerves of the brain we shall share the link in the description as well as here. So coming back to CP angle tumors. The early symptoms you may notice are hearing loss in one ear. It may be partial or it may be a profound loss of hearing. Ringing sound in the ear which is also called tinnitus. Dizziness or unsteadiness of gait or even facial pain which is called trigeminal neuralgia. Rarely, hemifacial spasm may also be seen. Later on, if the tumor becomes large, it may cause facial weakness or numbness, headache, difficulty in walking or imbalance, difficulty in swallowing or coughing during swallowing, if the ninth and 10th nerves are affected. These symptoms should not be ignored. Many of our patients go to their doctor thinking that the hearing loss or tinnitus is just ear wax or a minor nerve issue. But an early MRI can reveal the real cause. So how do we diagnose CP angle tumors? The first step is a detailed clinical examination followed by a hearing test. 
If there is a suspicion, the most reliable scan is an MRI. Sometimes a CT scan is also useful to study the nearby bone structures. As a neurosurgical team, we carefully study these images to determine the exact type and size of the tumor, its spread, the nerves that are affected, involvement of the brain structures nearby. All these helps us to choose the right treatment. Now, the most important question. How are CP angle tumors treated? Treatment of CP angle tumors depends on the size of the tumor, your symptoms, the age and your overall health. There are three main approaches. Watchful waiting, radiation therapy and microsurgery. Now let's understand each of these in detail. Watchful waiting or wait and watch. If the tumor is very small and not causing significant symptoms, we may decide to just monitor it. This means doing regular MRI scans to check for the growth of the tumor. Many patients live for a couple of years this way without needing any active treatment or active intervention. The second treatment is radiation therapy. Focused radiation like gamma knife or cyber knife can slow or stop the tumor growth. But I must caution you here. Do not rush into radiation therapy without a detailed consultation. Many patients come to us thinking radiation is safer than surgery. This is not always true. Once a tumor is radiated and if it still grows later, surgery can become much more difficult. The tissue becomes sticky, the planes are lost and risk to the nerves increases. That is why in our experience, in such cases, radiation is best used only after surgery, that is, in cases where complete tumor removal is not possible. Please consult a skilled and experienced neurosurgeon before taking such decisions. At our center, the goal is always to balance safety, effectiveness and long-term results. The third option is microsurgery. When the tumor is growing or already causing problems, surgical removal becomes necessary. CP angle surgery is a delicate procedure. The cranial nerves are very close together and very sensitive. They have to be handled with love and respect to get the best outcomes. Of course, a few tumors can be large and stuck to these nerves already making surgery difficult and complicated. At our center, we have performed numerous CP angle surgeries using specialized techniques like retrosigmoid approach where we operate from behind the ear. This is useful when hearing preservation is needed. Or we may use the middle fossa approach where we operate from the side of the head. This is suitable for tumors located in the internal ear canal. Or the translabyrinthine approach. This approach is generally used when hearing is already lost as it gives good access to larger tumors. Each case is unique. The choice of surgical method depends on the tumor's size, location and your hearing status. With our vast experience of 30 years operating on such tumors, we aim to remove the tumor while trying to preserve the facial and hearing functions as much as possible and as much as the tumor allows. This of course, like I just said, depends on the anatomy of the tumor and how it has grown. Now that we have understood the treatment options, what to expect after treatment? Most CP angle tumors have a good outcome when treated properly. After surgery, some patients may need physiotherapy or speech therapy for full recovery. In a few cases where we intentionally leave behind a small part of the tumor to protect one or more nerves, we can use radiation therapy after surgery. This sequence, that is, surgery first and radiation later, is safer and more effective. We always explain this clearly to our patients and their families because the aim is not just removing the tumor but also preserving the quality of life. That is why choosing the right surgeon is important in a patient who has CP angle tumor. CP angle surgery is not your routine brain operation. It demands high level precision, modern equipment, continuous intraoperative neuromonitoring and above all a highly experienced team. 
This includes not just the neurosurgeon, but skilled anesthesiologists, trained nurses inside the operation theater as well as in the ICU, and dedicated technicians in the operation theater. Over the past 30 years, we have managed both straightforward and complex cases, including many resurgeries after prior treatments elsewhere. Some tumors are simple to handle, but others can be extremely challenging and carry significant risks. We have seen this directly and indirectly because we operate in the CP angle area nearly every day. This area has become so familiar to us that the entire team in the operation theater is ready and well prepared. While every surgery carries some risk, an experienced surgeon can often reduce those risks considerably and some tumors can behave in very unexpected ways. From what I've seen, choosing the right team at the start may save you time, money, and most importantly, may avoid preventable complications. When it comes to such a sensitive area of the brain, my advice is don't compromise. Go with the team that does this regularly. Experience makes all the difference. As I promised at the beginning, let me share an interesting fact that most people don't know. Some CP angle tumors, like epidermoid cysts, are actually present from birth. Yes, you heard it right. It's present from birth. You're born with them. But they only start showing symptoms in your 20s or 30s. They grow so slowly that the body tolerates them for years. That's why diagnosis often gets delayed and people think it's a sudden neurological problem. But an MRI scan can clearly reveal the cause. This is why early detection and consulting a specialist is so important. Do watch our video on epidermoid cysts to know more. I will link it somewhere here. So I hope this video helped you understand CP angle tumors in simple terms. If you or your loved one is facing symptoms like one-sided hearing loss, dizziness or facial numbness, please consult a doctor early. If you need guidance or a second opinion, feel free to reach out to us. And if you found this video helpful, please like, share and subscribe. Thank you and take care. Jai Hind.